Well, for the last several years, a lot of men have been asking themselves some tough questions. Questions about where they fit in the world, how they should act, what it means to be a man in the 90s. But lately, what's become known as the men's movement has come under attack from men themselves. Men who are asking, why is everybody asking so many questions? Carol Off has this look at the movement, its believers, and its skeptics. Something's happened to the male gender. Proving manhood just isn't what it used to be. Not enough to be strong, tough, quick. Now they have to be sensitive, deep, and understanding. They once ran the world. Now they're trying to find a place in it. And some of them will go to any lengths to get in touch with their lost manhood. There certainly are a lot of troubled and confused guys out there. Just look at all the self-help books. Fire in the Belly on Being a Man, Grizzlies and White Guys. You just don't understand. This is just the pre-Christmas batch. Last time we looked, guys were still running the world. They still have a monopoly on the history of the human species. But decades of frontal assault on male power has had its effects. A lot of guys are just taking this in stride. But for others, it's not so easy. They've put on the mantle of the oppressed, and they've declared themselves victims. California, where a guy can find his pure essence, just muscle against the forces of nature. This is also where traditional male roles are being questioned. Hollywood man, strong, virile, all-knowing, seems implausible these days. Canadian Ian Brown's living here. He's just published Man Overboard, a review of men's search for their role in the world. Just about every day, I think, for uh, literally 20 years, I guess. Uh, not a day went by when I did not... Uh, when someone, generally a woman, but not always, generally in person, but not always, did not question my uh, sense of purpose as a man and tell me that I w was blowing it. What's the problem? I mean, if, particularly if you look at privileged world of men, they have all the power, they have all the money, they have all the influence, they still run everything, they run all the countries. Well, it's a very good question, and it's one I posed you know, to a lot of these you know, wailing guys who I met. And one of them, um, in particular, put it that I remember, um, put it very well. He said, that's the problem. I am a middle-class white man. I am supposedly the envy of the world, and yet I feel like a piece of garbage. Why is that? To find out why men feel like garbage, we came here to the theater of Heinz Hall in Pittsburgh. It's usually where opera and ballet is held. But so pressing is the quest to find out what happened to men, tonight the theater is featuring a lament for guys who have lost it. From America's best folk satirist, Garrison Keillor, he's just published The Book of Guys. You are very kind, and I hope to call further on your kindness as the evening progresses. For I'm a sad figure, an aging male, a man at a very sensitive and delicate point in his life. A man who realizes that his gender, once one of the world's great genders, <laughs> seems to slide ever further, year after year, into a kind of pathetic earnestness and to a kind of insincere sensitivity, getting farther and farther away from our roots as guys. Guys try too hard to be Mr. OK, Mr. All Right, to be the sort of guy who can bake a cherry pie, who can throw together a great souffle, who can make perfect little melon balls, and who can converse easily about intimate things, who can laugh, cry, hug, participate in recreational weeping, who can go upstairs and be passionate in a skillful and inventive way, and then can go out the next day and 
do his work and lift those bales onto that barge and tote that barge. This is not a good way to spend your life, to try to be okay. It's not good enough. But men have always tried really hard to be okay, better than okay, maybe even superior. They like to test their mettle and prove themselves. It's just that at one time it was probably a bit easier to stretch your stuff. There were bad nights and there were good nights. The good ones killed the bad ones and they got the girl. My lady. We know what happens next. There are no legends saying um, beautiful princess marries conscious as objector. Women chose the dominant, powerful, warlike men, the warriors, the princes, the ones that could provide for them. We're all in this process together. The book is done very well in Brazil mm -hmm. and very well in Italy. Lauren Farrell claims women drive men to prove themselves, so much that men have got themselves into a serious rut. And the only way out is a men's liberation movement. As a kind of Betty Friedan of masculism, his books get scores of responses from everywhere. His latest book attempts to prove male power is just a myth. Men are apparently duped into believing they're in control in order to get them to do all the world's dirty work, like war and garbage collecting. They even have to play football because women want them to. It is true that we get the approval of women when we continue our um, I'm biggest author, your biggest um, you know, show host, your biggest economist, and that type of thing. This is all our form of male competition. Yeah. And women love it. I mean, you're As a leader of men's lib, Farrell's a hot ticket item on the talk show circuit, where they're always on the lookout for professional provocateurs. And he runs a kind of cottage industry from his San Diego home. Farrell has all kinds of facts and figures he says account for why men are the way they are. He lays claim to the ultimate in victim lingo. He says men are niggers. When I, say, I talk about men as niggers, what I mean is that a lot of the experience that men have are off very comparable to the experiences that blacks and slaves had in this culture. For example, uh, we have um, almost all the hazardous jobs were held by slaves. Now, almost all the hazardous jobs are held by men. Uh, people in prison are much more likely to be blacks and slaves. Uh, the people in prison in America are men. The people dying sooner are blacks and slaves. The people dying sooner in the United States are, are men. This is where it all began. Women went and got themselves liberated. They took control of their lives. And men have been flapping about without a role in life ever since. The beauty of the women's movement is, is helping women go inside of themselves and say, what do I want to do and be? Most children have never even asked their dad that question. Most men have never been enough in touch with their feelings to allow themselves to ask the question, what do I want to be? Because when he answers that question, his internal fear is that what I'd like to be will not earn enough money to support the family I'm obligated to support. What I don't like about Dr. Farrell is that he always defines himself in terms of women. Part of the problem for men is that they've, especially in the last 20 years when feminism has been very prominent, they've had to define themselves defensively, you know, in terms of what they are not that women say they are. That's no way to live your life, you know, it really, that, that's like starting from some ideal of perfection that you're not, and how can you possibly get up to the ideal of perfection? I, I think as, in fact, Garrison Keillor says in in his book, you know, being perfect is no way to live, trying to be perfect is no way to live your life. I would agree completely. There was an old guy, kind of a tall, hatchet-faced guy, stepped into the circle, who said, boys, he said, I've been trying most of my adult life to please women, and I am farther away now than I was when I started. <laughs> I gave up duck hunting, deer hunting, don't pay much attention to football anymore. Not sure I even remember the rules. For recreation, I just, mainly I just belong to discussion groups and paint. I paint watercolors, still lifes for the most part. And yet, she is angrier at me today than she was back when I was worth being angry at. <laughs> he said, self-betrayal never ever works. I say nuts to sensitivity, he said. 
I said, go ahead and fart. <laughs> so we did, all of us together. Cut one, and the fire blazed up, blew almost up to the trees. It was a proud, manly moment. Some say this is where the trouble begins. Little girls have all the social advantages. I made the cupcakes a little bit. They play at being grown-ups. Meanwhile, what are the boys doing? All trailers move out. Surviving, mostly. Girls create complex family groups. Boys create noise. He wants to be a cowboy. So, which sex seems better prepared for what comes next? Which adult gender more likely to be in control? And women just get better at it all the time, while men try to figure out the complex new rules of gender relations. It's driving a lot of guys into the woods. I think we're always told that you know we're males and we're special or we're males and we have this power and it's just like wow it's just you you put all this pressure on me <laughs> i didn't ask for that you know it's just i happen to be in a male body and what i'm trying to do is learn how to find the different aspects of myself without having to have that added stress of you're a man you got to be this you know well, i'm not happy doing what my dad did you know my, i love my dad but you know he went to work every day and he died with a lot of unfulfillment. I don't know that he would want to be in our men's group, but uh, you know, he didn't end up being really living out all of who he could be. It took a lot of pain to get here. That is my power in the fact that I can be free and I can hug my brothers and, you know, and there's no issues. And, you know, Hi, I love you. Okay. Football game. But a lot of other men say it's not so complicated being a guy. Michael Corrin writes a men's column for the Globe and Mail. Most men go to work, come home from work, come in, spend time with their wife and their children and have fun, have dinner, get up again and go to work. That's what real men are about. Not about banging drums or banging anything else. They're about just getting on with their lives. Of course there is a certain self-analysis that goes on. It's inevitable. Let's not get it out of proportion. I mean, people are not philosophers every day of their lives, or if they are, it's inherent within the act of living. But actually going out and saying, OK, chaps, from now on we're going to bang drums and philosophize about the world. That no, I, I, I really suspect that. I think it's completely fraudulent. The problem with the men's liberation movement is that no one seems to know what it's about. They don't see men out marching in the streets calling for equal rights or having the male equivalents of bra burnings, whatever that might be. There's certainly an industry appealing to beleaguered guys, but is there really a movement? Or is it just a lot of unhappy men trying to find a place in a changing world? That's who the men's movement is for. It's for men who made a tragic sacrifice, married women they didn't love, went into work they had no feeling for, and now they're unhappy. And, and I'm sad, but that doesn't const I'm sad for them, but that does not constitute a movement. Okay. So what's really changed for guys? Most of them do many of the same things. They're still driven by the same forces of nature. They still have the same hormones. Oh, yes. And they do all kinds of guy stuff. So Michael Cohen says there's nothing to get liberated from. I'm being a guy when I pick up my baby at two in the morning and nurse him back to sleep. I'm being a guy then. There's nothing about being a guy uh, that makes you get drunk and watch football. These are all part of being a man, of taking responsibility for being a man. It has never really changed. My father changed my diapers. He picked me up when I was a baby. You know, he took time off to look after children. He was also going out there driving a cab 15 hours a day to make a living. He was a guy. You know, my, my grandfather was a you know, tailor in the East End, went off to fight the army for five years. He came back and looked up. He was a guy. They didn't beat up their wives or partners. They lived the best life they possibly could. They were guys. Men are still basically in control of the world, but there are some serious challenges to their ownership. 
Some men may decide to draw the wagons into a circle and fight it out. Others may try on different hats, like Iron Man, G.I. Joe Man, New Age Man, Sensitive Man. Maybe they'll take a page from the feminist movement and start spelling men with a Y. But one suspects that a lot of guys may welcome the opportunity to share the power and maybe spend more time with the kids. After all, it's not so much fun to run the world anymore. And if others want a piece of the action, hey, maybe we can make some arrangements. For Primetime News, I'm Carol Off. And Carol's story was produced by Andrew Gregg. When CBC Primetime continues, the latest on tonight's top news stories.